Hey everybody, Nick here, once again for a, another Cinema 4D video. Um, so this time we're going to try to just cover the basics in a reasonable length of a video. We don't want to go on too long, keep the attention spans. So when you first load up Cinema 4D, um, if you've never used the program before, it can be quite uh, intimidating. There's lots of buttons, lots of lines, lots of different things. And, um, yeah, it seems a lot more complicated than it actually is. So, um, let's, let's start with uh, adding some basic shapes to your scene. So, this is your work space, your whatever you want to call it exactly. But, um, so there are these four buttons up on the right side of your your uh, your window. And there's one with the, the four arrows. If you click and hold that, you can drag around your space. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to add an actual object in there. Just to make it seem more realistic. So I'm going to come up to the square. I'm going to click and hold. And I'm just going to add a cube. So I'm just going to drag over the cube and I'm going to let go over the cube. Now we have a cube in here. So when I'm clicking and dragging those four arrows that we were talking about, it just drags around the workspace. Um, you can zoom in by scrolling your mouse in and out. Or the next option, you can click and hold and you can drag your mouse forward or backwards and it zooms in and out for you. The next little one here with the arrows going into a circle that is your camera rotation so you click and hold that and you can rotate the camera around your scene at will just like so and then the last one here is um, kind of like a little window inside of a big window and that's kind of what it does so inside of your Cinema 4D you have different views and this is the button that you're going to click to access those different views. So we're going to go ahead and click that now. And what that's going to do is going to separate into four different windows. We have our perspective window. It says on the top left of each window. Um, so that's kind of like the, the full 3D view of that window. Um, and then we got the top view, which is here. And the same buttons for everything same thing to do. Uh, the right side, the front, you can change these views um, by coming under cameras and choosing what side you want and stuff. You, you can get fancy with it, but for now we're going to keep it simple. So, um, whatever window you want, you can just go ahead and click on the same button that separates it and I'll choose that window. So whatever would know you want like that. Um, also, a little shortcut for that is if you um, center click on your mouse on the scroll, it also is just a, a shortcut for swapping in between these windows. Okay, so now that we got a basic shape inside of our, our um, workspace here, um, when you highlight on it, when you click on your object, you have these three arrows that pop up, and that's just to drag your object in that direction. Um, if you click on the actual arrow, it'll highlight, and then it'll just go in that direction. But if you just miss it, it'll go in every direction, and it's a lot messier. Um, you might also notice that there are these three orange dots can't really see. Zooming in doesn't really do anything. Those are essentially just quick uh, edits for your object that you can click and drag and rescale your object. So I can make my cube to a rectangle, back into a cube, to a square, flat square. Um, but also when you have your object clicked, you have all the properties down here on the right side. So you can just 
input whatever size you want and you have your object. It's a little small so I'm just going to put it back to 100. Um, essentially these segments are just how many um, essentially like how many polygons on each side of the cube you're going to have. You can't see them now but if you were to make it editable you'd be able to see it. So um, moving on from that though there is a couple extra options here. Um, the fillet option. So if we go ahead and check the fillet option you're going to notice it kind of turns into a ball because the cube is small but if I put it back to 200 I believe is the normal you see it looks more like a cube with rounded edges and essentially that's what it does it just rounds the edges off for you so if we um, just make this fillet radius a little bit smaller you'll notice that it has a nicer curve to it and um, once again if you have a big radius you can see how the corners are kind of sharp that's only because there's technically only five polygons uh, there's only five subdivisions so if you crank that up it smooths that corner real nice so if we brought that down to one it doesn't have as many surfaces to make the curve with so essentially more polygons you have more subdivision you have the smoother it's gonna be alright so now let's go ahead and um, let's say you want to render this cube make a finished project out of it there is a quick render preview button here that when you click it just renders the scene as it is so this is what we got so far we just got a gray cube black background nothing special um, if you go into there's the three the center one is to uh, actually render it but if you click on edit render settings up a little window pops up and there's just a whole whack of settings that you can choose from that you can set it to screen sizes 4k you can set it to film 1080p 30 frames per second film 4k there's endless amount of options that you can um, render it out as um, there's just lots and lots of little options that we'll get in further on in tutorials don't want to go in too much in depth right now just keep it on the basis um, so if you click and hold on the square like we did to add the cube you'll notice that there is multiple different um, objects that we can add so there's a cube there's a capsule um, an oil tank there's there's just tons of of different uh, objects in there and then um, there's there's different uh, modifiers and and um, different kind of things in all these other tabs but um, to keep it basic pretty much shapes and another basic thing that lots of people just want is a text spline so under this one with the pen if you click and hold drag your mouse over to text and let go of your mouse you'll notice that we have a text I'm just gonna go ahead and delete those objects there so we have a text spline so if we go ahead and render that well you'll notice that nothing shows up and that's because it's just the outline of it it's the spline there is an actual a physical object and so to make it an actual object if you go to this one the extrude option which is under this um, green ball inside of the cage click and hold highlight extrude let go and then we're just gonna click and drag the text onto the extrude and you'll notice that there's a little arrow in a box that pops up 
we want the arrow pointing down. And that's going to place our spline in the um, extrude object. And now, when we render, we can see our text. And in our text, if we click on it, we can edit all of our... Uh, we can edit our text, what it says. We can edit the fonts that we have. If you have thousands of fonts, you can edit whatever you want. Um, horizontal spacing, so you can make more spaces between letters. Vertical spacing doesn't really do anything because we only have one line of text. And, um, yeah. There's there's uh, tons of stuff that we can do, but keep it simple for now. Now, when we render, we have a very poorly rendered version of a text, but just starting off, so it's normal. Um, yeah, so there's just a bunch of also, we'll get into some tools here, actually. So, the tool that I have selected on this side, on this top bar, I got the Move tool, which, again, brings out these three different arrows. Now, by clicking on and dragging it, I can move my object in whatever direction I'm clicking and dragging on that one. So, the green one goes up and down, the blue goes forward and backwards, and the red one goes sideways. This next one is a scale tool. If you highlight over them, they tell you what they do. So if I want, I can scale this one. It scales uniform, no matter which way you go. So while it's in this form, if you make it editable and stuff, you can do differently, but we're not gonna get into that yet. And then there's the rotate tool, which once you click on it, it brings up this little sphere and then again you can click and drag on different parts of the sphere and it'll just rotate the object in that direction um, I'm probably gonna leave it there uh, we don't want to do too much and get too far in this is a basics video and fine if you are trying to learn sometimes too much information at once is a bad thing. So um, maybe we'll do a second basic video in the near future, but we'll leave that for now. And um, yeah, just remember that although it may seem super intimidating at first, if you play around with it and you click on some buttons, um, you'll get the hang of it. I mean, if you're not doing anything serious and not worried about screwing something up, you can click on a button and try to add add one of these effectors to it. You just mess around with it. But um, for now, we're going to leave it there, and we'll be back next time with a, another basics how-to video. All right, guys. See you next time.